what we are left with it it is very simple things why i am saying very simple things because uh, in that we we just have to understand how exactly all those things work uh, so that would not should not take much time uh so we will go back into our same report so what was that report it's vd1 yes yeah advance see this this is all what prompts so i'll go ahead and click on okay and i'll try to edit it why i'll try to edit because now I'm going to remove the prompts because I don't need them. I have understood it. So the first prompt, I'll remove it from here, age. So prompts we have understood guys. And you know, the two things which is very easy, uh, we'll try to see if we can do it. So output. So when I run the report as, as of now, I'll go ahead and click on OK and run the report. So what do you think? How is the report output coming right now? Oh, prompts are not removed. I'm so sorry. OK, I'll just add one female and then click on OK. So how, how is this report uh, you know coming in front of us right now? Tabular format. Tabular format, right? It's a table. But Workday gives you an opportunity that you can actually go ahead and use table or any other format also. Now, what when I say any other format, what does that mean? So you can generate charts, graphs, all those things you can do. Ideally, you know, it's very rare that you would see in Workday that people are using it. But first, let me remove the subfilter and prompts. Okay, right, now I'll go to output. Now see what happens is, when you talk about output, the output that we are seeing currently is stable, right? It's in a tabular format. But if you want, you can change the output, how? So you can go into chart, chart and table and gauge. Now I'm sure that everybody must be knowing what is chart, what is table, what is gauge. Is there anybody who does not know? Yes, no, please tell me. Gauge, uh, I don't know about gauge. Okay, gauge you don't know. Hmm? Have you heard about funnel? I'm no, not, no. Okay, so basically these are all the ways to represent the things, you know, when you go ahead and put it so i'll show you you know you want a speedometer you know something like that so that you're able to measure okay that is how exactly it looks like so it says metered value okay what do you want to do is a metered value maybe i'll say age although you know our report is not in that way that it can be put in a gauge format so all these things are basically used when you use dashboard Okay, so 90% of the time, 95 to 99% of the time, we have tabular format. Okay, we have tabular format, and that's the reason we hardly use anything in this. I mean, does that make sense? I hope it is, you know, helping you to understand what I'm trying to say. So the chart and everything we rarely use. But what I would suggest is you go ahead. Uh, you know you can go ahead and uh, try doing it by yourself in case you have questions you always ask me but to be honest i have rarely used it because none of my customers have asked me to go ahead and say that okay can you build a gauge for me can you build a something like that because they would say give me the report that's the first thing once the report is built right then if they need any of this, then they will say, can you build a dashboard for me? Dashboard building is something else, which is not the part of our curriculum, but yeah, there you will have all these systems where you will use the report and get the things done. But 
not in this place. You will hardly see anybody asking you for that. But yeah, if there is somebody who is asking you, you can easily do it. You can just change it to, you know, table and chart. And what will happen in that case, guys, see, when I use chart and table, right, you have to put the chart options. So what is this? Chart is donut, right? Then if you want to change it, you can. Column clustered, stack, bar. So all these things I'm sure you would have used. So for us, it is not helpful because we have to have our report in that way. You see, the legend is there. We don't have anything where I can actually put any legend, right? So that's the reason um, I have to put that data in such a way that it can be into x-axis or y-axis. Do you know what is x-axis, y-axis of graph? I'm sure everybody would know that. X-axis and y-axis in a graph. Yeah. Right? So we have to make sure that the data we are putting in a table, it should be in that format. Then only we can actually develop a chart. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay? So here we don't have anything as such. We have first name, last name, gender. That is all we have and the job profile and dependence. So there is nothing numerical about it. When you have to do a display something on the chart, it has to have a numerical part associated with that. So for example, I'm grouping that within one range, let's say uh, 18 to 25, how many employees are there? 26 to 30, how many employees are there? 31 to 35 or 31 to 40, how many employees are there? So this group, when you create, it becomes more like a chart, right? And that you can represent in the chart. So all these kind of things you have to build. And as I stated, you will hardly get this kind of requirement in Workday. All right. So you try it. In case you have any questions, always reach out. I'll try to see what I can do to help you with that. Okay, but the most important part here is share. Okay, now why I'm saying that this is the one of the important parts share because it is regarding the security of your report. Okay, so what is there in the security of my report here? So when I go ahead and do this report definition sharing, when I will do it or sorry, when I'll build any report, I will be the owner of it. Okay. When I will build any report, I will be the owner of it. Now, when I am the owner of it, I would not like to share this report with anybody. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, I this will not be shared with anybody. But, suppose I want to share. And I want to share it so that other people can also look into it and make some changes as required. So there are two options to share. First is share with all authorized user. Now, who is an authorized user? Whoever access to the tenant. Exactly. So whoever has access to the tenant or whoever is able to access Workday, they are all authorized user. Now, if I am going to share with all authorized user, which means this report is no longer a private report, it is becoming a public report. Anybody can look into it and it can changes, can make the changes, right? So that sort of report is basically called as public report. And in that scenario, when you use share option, you will get this option which says share with all authorized user. So this is generally not advised. Now, if I want to share it with specific people and groups, so what happens when you run, uh, when you build reports, right? So there are report groups that you can actually go ahead and share with them. And with that group, you will have specific people. So here you see, these are the groups that is already there in the system. Now, if you want to use it, you want to share it with anybody, you can. If you don't want to, you can just ignore it. You want to share it with specific people. Let's say I, I am the owner, like I'm logged in as Carol Lee. So I'm going to share it with Logan. So I'll go ahead and share it with Logan. So if I go ahead and do that, so this report can be 
executed can be edited by Logan and by Carol Lee as I have created it with the user Carol. I hope it is clear. Does that make sense? Yes. Can we please go back there? Where? Uh, to the share option. Yes, tell me. Right. So I was clear on all authorized users. Okay. I want to know a little bit more about like sharing with specific. Uh, yeah. No, no, not there. Scroll down, please. Yeah, I, I got it. What is your doubt? I mean, I'm just trying to so, edit it. Okay. So in your project, right, there'll be a business analyst, pro, uh, project managers, mm -hmm. or financial uh, business side users. So how do we categorize? Because... For example, if there are like 20 people, right, you'll not individually give access to each of them. Yes, uh, that's the reason we have these groups, right? Authorized groups. Yes. So, Can you please... yeah. So what happens in this, when you create uh, a report and you want to share it with a lot of people. So okay. what happens? You get two things. One is your security group and another is called as, uh, you know, you see this? create segment based security group and prism access security group so prism access security group is used in prism i'm not sure how many of you know but prism is the analytical platform of workday are you aware about it anybody heard about it yes yeah, so prism is the analytical platform of workday now if you know about uh, security in workday right so Whenever we talk about security, there is a security group concept. Anybody ISS. knows? Is it ISSG? ISS. Yes. Role-based, user-based. Yes, role-based, user-based, right? So that is where your security groups come into picture. Now, for specific report, when you want to create, you have to create the security group. Because in Workday, the security is provided only through the security groups. So if you have gone through core connectors, or sorry, not connectors, but core HCM, you must have studied about user-based security group, role-based security group, right? And when you go into the advanced reporting, there is an option called create segment-based security group. So when you actually go ahead and do that, right? Create segment-based security group. So it will ask you for the security group, which is there already in the system, which is either your role-based or your user-based security group. That you need to put provide. I'm not sure. Uh, so uh, how, are, you, are you all aware about the role-based security group or no, you're not? little bit that's where we wanted more information on this uh, that is a part of core hcm so i'm not sure if you have gone through that but yeah uh, let me tell you i'll give you a brief idea i cannot actually configure yeah. everything here but yeah i'll definitely tell you see there is a very different rule of uh, security in workday how exactly it works is the permissions are not at all given straight away to a user in other systems, you might have seen the permissions are directly given to a user. You are on or on their profile, right? If you have to give any permissions, how do you give? You will give the permissions on the profile and whoever is, uh, you know, getting that profile, they are able to get the same kind of permissions, right? right? But in, he, in Workday, it is different. So where do we give the permissions? We give the permissions to a security group. Okay. Okay, then based on the security group, what kind of security group is that? There are multiple types of security groups in Workday, but primarily there are two, which is user-based and role-based. Now, suppose it is a role-based security group. So okay. as a HR, I, I am creating a security group for HR analysts or HR executive. Okay. So somebody who is going to join an organization with the role of HR executive, right? Let's say there are five, 10 HR executives who are helping us to complete the day-to-day -day activities of HR. Now, mm -hmm. instead of giving each and every person the, uh, you know, the permissions on their profile, we give the permissions on the security group. And what we do is we assign that role to that security group. 
So once you assign the role to the security group, there is a concept of inheritance. The mm -hmm. role inherits the permission from the security group. So whatever the permissions you have given to the security group, it is inherited by the role. Okay. Now, when someone joins the organization, you assign that role to that person. So if you, if I have, uh, you know, I'm joining as HR executive, so I will get that role of HR executive. So okay. once I've got the role of HR executive, I indirectly become the member of that security group. Okay. Okay. So what will happen now? Whatever permissions you have given to the security group, all those permissions I have automatically got it. Okay. So anybody with that HR executive role will have the same permission as I have, as I'm also the member of it. So in this way, what happens is you don't have to do any troubleshooting for a particular user. What happens is you give the role to a person, that person automatically has the same permission what the security group has. So it actually helps a lot uh, when, you know, uh, making the security simple. So that's the reason here you see it says create segment based security, right? Segment based security basically is dependent upon your role based or user based security group. So why it, it is telling you because it needs a security group here. Okay, the so security group is already, which means a role based or user based security group will already be there, right? See, all security group or all security groups. So, if I just go into this, yeah, there are multiple security groups you see there. Right. So, aggregation, the, I'm, compensation, uh, right? I'm more interested in about like the what I was saying, right? ISSG, which is integrated. Can you scroll up a little bit? This is so the one you're talking about, right? Exactly. Integrated system security group. Now, that is completely yeah. only for integration. That is exactly. not at all related for reports. Um, so that's where I'm like, you know, wanted to know, like, uh, do you know about the integration system user? Devish? Yeah, we will study about this when we go into integration, not right now. Hello. Oh. So uh, that will be a separate topic because that's where I was. Yeah, not separate topic, but integration uh, requires you to understand how security group functions. So that right. we will definitely discuss. So okay. that's that's how exactly it works. Okay. So guys, this is why you no know, the security of report is also very important. That with whom you are sharing, and why are you sharing? So that becomes very important. Uh, because when you share the report, right, they will have the power to make the changes. There is one more thing that comes here. Now, what is that one more thing? The one more thing is, um, it would say that complete the transfer or transfer the ownership. Okay, complete transfer of the ownership. If it's complete transfer of the ownership, then whoever has created this report, suppose I have created it, but let's say I am transferring it to Logan. So I will lose the complete control. I will not even be able to share, you know, search that report also. So that is also a part of your security. So let me uh, just cancel this for the moment. And uh, or I'll just go ahead and click on OK. I'll share it with Logan. That's not a problem. So what I'll do is I'll now show you one more important part. So what is that? You see this option which says transfer ownership. So when you go ahead and click on it, it will tell you who is going to be the new owner. So this is my report name and who is going to be the new owner. So I have created it, but let's say if I am sharing it with Logan or C or anybody, because in real time you will have multiple users, so you can share it with anybody. So I will lose the access. So one question is when you give the new owner, right? It is one of the user in the system, like an authorized user. Yes. And once you do that, right? Will there be any approvals that are will go through in the system level that we need to approve to make it? No, no, approval? not really. Not really. Because no. this is not a business process. Okay. okay. So is, whenever, like whenever there is a whenever there is a business process associated with that, yes, then in that case, you will see approval getting triggered. 
uh, not approval i would say like you know are there any bunch of action items or tasks that get triggered that we need to go into one of the um, action item and select them and like you know okay or do something like that no if you just try to put a name here that is enough okay. so for example i'll go ahead and put logan right okay. that is enough for me there is nothing that will trigger and you you now lost complete access on that right yes yeah, so i will not even able to search it so if you if you will try aha uh -huh, you know asking me to do it see it gives me an error the mm -hmm. task submitted is not authorized right so i have lost the access completely i don't have anything so mm -hmm. if i just search it once again <clears throat> it will not give me anything okay unless you are a user of it okay see nothing so how i can go ahead and do it i'll say i'll say start proxy i don't know if you have used it but i'm just trying to explain it to you so this is a way by which i can actually log in at that user so i'll log in as logan and click on okay yeah and then i will try to search for this report okay so it's on behalf of this particular user so i've got this report now right this is the report that we had i'll click on okay okay and now i can go ahead and click on actions transfer the ownership again okay so now i will go back and i will stop the proxy and i'll be back as the original user right so once i have the original user i will be able to use that report now because i have got the access back 